So plenty of you have asked me to check out a PC from Light, and they were kind enough to sponsor this video and send over a build to check out in this video. So let's unbox this thing, check out the specs in here, examine the build quality and the cable management, run a couple quick games as well as a couple quick CPU benchmarks, and see how hot this thing runs. Okay, so the cool thing about Light is that they charge a flat $100 fee on all their builds, and right now they're actually running a sale where the build fee is $0. So if you're thinking about getting a PC build, uh, now might be a great time for that. I also love that they have transparent pricing on their website, so you can easily see how much each part costs. And over here, we can see two bags of accessories and additional cables. And what's also great is that Light double boxed this as well. So there's a box just right out of frame, and that's the outer box that they used uh, to house this, this case box. And they used a ton of bubble wrap in there as well, which was awesome. There's uh, styrofoam already in here, and then there's some inner foam inside the PC as well to protect the components. This is usually what I like to do. Just like have my feet over there, prop in the box, and then pull out the styrofoam. <laughs> okay, let's remove the styrofoam from this PC. Let's pull this plastic bag covering the case as well. So this is a pre-built PC with Windows 11 Home 64-bit pre-installed. All the drivers should also be installed, and this build should be ready to go right as we turn it on. And that is the cool thing about pre-built PCs. And this from Light also comes with a one year warranty. And if this thing for some reason does not work, they have a free 30 day return window and they have a policy where they'll send over a new replacement PC. And only when you receive the replacement, do you send back the original faulty system. And I think that's a great business practice because it really just goes to show that they truly care about putting a fully functioning product in the customer's hands. Okay, so let's open up the side panel right here. Slide out the side panel. So this case, is the Magnum Gear Neo Cube 2. I love the uh, the foam that they use in here. I love how Instapack is really, really snug. Here we have the spare power supply cables. This will come in handy if we ever install extra accessories inside this build. And uh, this right here should be extra accessories. So we have manuals, PCIe slot covers, a 16 pin adapter right here to power the GPU as well. Mounting accessories for the uh, cooler that they use, extra screws, the power cable, which we will need to power on this PC. And I love that they have a manual right here. So this is a quick start guide. Shows you how to remove the packaging film, take out the thumb screws for the side panels. So let's connect this Wi-Fi antenna to the back of the PC. And and the power supply cable to the back of the power supply. Let's plug that in. So before we go ahead and turn this thing on, let's check out the specs as well as the build quality and the cable management and double check that none of the cables came undone during transit. So this particular system from Light is the Light Goliath PC. It's rocking the AMD Ryzen 7 7700X CPU, eight cores, 16 threads, a base clock of 4.5 gigahertz, and a boost clock of 5.4 gigahertz. The GPU is none other than the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4090. This one's the Asus Tough Gaming version. And you can see it's a triple fan card vertically mounted on the case. It's a bit close to the side glass panel, which I am a little bit concerned about, but there seems to be plenty of intake fans. So we'll have to check out temperatures in a little bit. RAM is 32 gigabytes. That's two 16 gigabyte sticks of Kingston's Fury Beast DDR5 RAM clocked at 6,000 mega transfers. And there's also RGB. For storage, there's a one terabyte ADATA NVMe M.2 SSD. The power supply is a 1000 watt 80 plus gold deep cool unit. And the motherboard is is an ASUS X670 Tough Gaming AM5 motherboard. You get a stealthy all black design with this build, as well as a ton of tempered glass with the side panel and the front panel. The top panel is ventilated and that should allow for great airflow. Okay, so taking a look at the main compartment of the case right here, all the cables seem to be fully seated and I really like the cable management. The AIO tubes are nice and tidy with these deep cool clips. This is also a 240 millimeter liquid cooler cooling down the CPU. Looks like none of the cables came undone, which is great to see. And they are all neatly tucked away into the cable grommets, which keeps this build nice and clean. Now as for the other compartment of the case, all the power supply cables are zip tied down, which keeps everything super clean. Cable management just looks immaculate. I normally just close up the other side panel and just forget I ever saw it. But overall, I'm very impressed with the cable management and the build quality. This case also has plenty of IO at the front. You get the power button, a couple RGB settings, your audio jack, USB-C, and a couple USB type A's. Moment of truth. 
So instantly the RGB just lights up and dang, that looks so cool. So you have an RGB strip on the case over here. All the fans are RGB. This vertical GPU mount is also RGB-ified as well. And you got the RGB on the RAM as well as uh, the pump block. Okay, so I'm gonna connect to Wi-Fi, download a whole bunch of games, run a couple quick CPU benchmarks and check out how hot everything runs in here. So let's go ahead and do that. I can't believe I forgot the most important step. I forgot to peel the tempered glass side panel and as well as the front panel. So let's do that right now. The glass is peeled. It's like the first step and I just do it last. All right, so let's talk about gaming performance with this PC. So I played a bunch of games at 1440p resolution at the highest settings with ray tracing enabled when offered. First off, let's start with Valorant. I don't know why people still ask me to play this game because it is such an easy game to play. I was easily getting over 500 FPS. Do I even need to say anymore? Sign up for this shit. And when it came to Modern Warfare 2, I was playing multiplayer and getting about 185 FPS. And I'm currently playing on a 165 Hz 1440p monitor, so performance is just where I like it. And I was getting about 150 FPS with Warzone 2, and that's because the map is significantly larger and there's just a lot more stuff going on. Gameplay was definitely incredibly smooth, and you could always adjust the settings to get even more frames out of this system. 1 1 requesting recon at this time. Copy that, UAV online and opting the AO. Now with Fortnite, I was getting about 85 FPS and that was with ray tracing enabled at all epic settings. And I decided to turn off ray tracing and keep the settings at medium with the view distance on epic, which I feel like is an optimal setting that I like to play Fortnite at. And I was getting about 125 FPS, which is a pretty significant improvement. And as always with PC building and PC gaming, you can adjust the settings to however you like it. And if you want the maximum amount of frames possible for a competitive edge, you can lower the settings to the bare minimum, even reduce the resolution to like 1080p. So I'm overall really impressed with the gaming performance with this build. The 4090 is just an amazing card. And this Asus Tough one also stays really cool. And speaking of cool, let's talk about thermals with this build. So in this current configuration, light installed three intake fans at the bottom, providing fresh air for the graphics card, and then three more intake fans at the other side of the case. Now with the top of the case, you have the 240 millimeter AIO installed right here. And this liquid cooler has two 120 millimeter fans as exhaust. And this provides a pretty optimal setup because you get a ton of fresh air coming inside the case and then uh, hot air coming out the top. As for these specific thermals, I got the ambient room temperature is currently 72 degrees Fahrenheit or about 22.22222 repeating degrees Celsius. And after running a 10 minute Cinebench R23 run, I got a score of 18,885 with a max temp recorded of about 95.6 degrees Celsius. 99% of the time, the CPU is not gonna be running at 100% utilization. That was just a stress test. When gaming, the CPU hovers around 50 degrees Celsius with the liquid cooler installed. And let's talk about the GPU being vertically mounted over on this case. While the GPU is vertically mounted and fairly close to the tempered glass side panel, the three intake fans do a great job at providing fresh air to the graphics card. And with a Firmark GPU stress test, I was getting about 65 degrees Celsius with this thing and I'm actually really impressed. All right, to sum up everything with this build, I think this is an amazing system. So I haven't found any issues with build quality and cable management. Everything is just immaculate. I mean, taking a look at the other side of the case with the cable management neatly zip tied, and then also the main compartment of the case where all the cables are tucked away, and I don't see any stray cables just running straight through 
the components. All the RGB is fully functioning and plugged in. The RAM is running at 6,000 mega transfers per second and it's in the dual channel configuration. The only thing I would suggest changing with this build is probably going with a 360 millimeter AIO liquid cooler at the top of the case to cool down the Ryzen 7 7700X. For the people who might want to use this for streaming and gaming or the occasional content creation and video editing, you might benefit from having a larger radiator with uh, your AIO liquid cooler and that should keep the CPU temps in check when it comes to CPU intensive tasks that require it to run at 100% utilization. So the total for the system is $3,185 and that's not accounting for the build fee because Flight is currently running that zero build fee sale. You can see an itemized list of all the parts in the system on Light's website, which I'll also link in the description section of this video for your convenience. I think this is definitely worth it if you want a pre-built system that offers top of the line performance. You get excellent build quality, a great selection of parts, transparent pricing, a one-year warranty with this thing, as well as really neat cable management. I feel like you can't go wrong with this build from Light, and what's cool is that they also have plenty of other systems available as well to fit your performance and budget preferences. Thank you so much again to Light for sending over this system for us to review in this video, and thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, like and subscribe. And yet again, link for this build will be in the description section of this video for your convenience.